So thank you everybody for joining us today. I'm Michelle Rowan. I'm the president of Franchise Business Review. And I know most people are familiar with our FBR 50 or Franchisee Satisfaction Awards or our top franchises reports and guides that we distribute to candidates throughout the year, uh, both online and at the expos. Uh, but today I am joined by our CEO, Eric Stites, and we wanna share some of the best practices that we've learned over the last 10 years. Uh, from working with more than 800 franchise brands on how you guys can really uh, have an impact on your franchise development process and have uh, better candidates, better conversations with candidates and pull them through that, that uh, process that you have outlined. So with that, again, we only have 30 minutes, so we're going to jump right in. And Eric, why don't you uh, get things started here? Thanks, Michelle. Um, as, as Michelle mentioned, uh, process is... Uh, key in our first point is mapping out that process in as much detail as possible for candidates. Um, it's amazing to me, uh, this sounds obvious, but it's amazing to me how many franchise companies just kind of leave it up to the franchisee candidate as far as, you know, when when they're going to take the next step and what the process is going to be. And, and you really have to control that. I mean, obviously, this is franchising. It's all about systems. The more uh, control around that uh, sales process you can have um, well, obviously will make your sales process more effective but it'll also just tell candidates you know this is what franchising all is all about this is how you know we operate as a franchise company and it'll get them much more engaged um, and, and not allow them to set their own uh, schedule it'll also work as a great filtering tool because if you can find um, or, or, or if you have candidates that aren't following your set process, um, obviously they're probably not going to follow your process when they become franchisees. And you know, and when I say map it out in detail, I just wanted to show a couple examples here. Um, Sport Clips does a, a great job, I think, on their website of explaining what what the process is to joining their franchise. Um, they've got these nice uh, six steps mapped out on their website. Uh, with a little synopsis of each of those steps here. Uh, again, this is publicly available for anybody that's looking at their website. Um, they then have an e-tour, which goes into much greater detail on each of those steps and explains, again, what's to be expected from the franchisee, what the franchisor is going to be providing all along, and it really maps out that process. And, you know, you, again, you don't want to leave things up in the air. You want to, you know, have any requirements that the franchise candidate is going to need to provide uh, to you, you're going to want to make sure that that's clear to them what your expectations are as far as time frame goes when they should be getting back to you. Uh, you know, and another thing that I find um, a lot of times salespeople won't schedule their next call with a candidate, which I think is a huge missed opportunity. Um, every time you just, you know, say, oh, well, let's touch base next week and see where you're at. I mean, again, Let's get out the calendar now while I got you on the phone. Uh, you know, you're free next Wednesday. Let's let's set that time up. And again, that's going to tell you, you know, when the candidate blows you off the next week, are they serious or are they not, or can they keep those those appointments? I mean, this is a professional process. Obviously, franchising is very professional. If they can't follow that early process, they're not going to be great franchisee candidates um, in the long run. So you don't want them. Um, First Light, just another quick example of, of a detailed website and, you know, what are those steps to path to franchise ownership and really explaining that up front, those expectations with the candidate and giving them as much information uh, right out of the gate. Eric, I really like that one I was going to mention because um, I think it's it's really good to set those expectations of what's to come. With today's, the amount of people that are, are on the internet in today's process of they want as much information as possible before they even get to the development, it's really clear that people don't want to be sold. So I think they kind of know come. It, it puts their hackles down, that they don't feel like people are trying to uh, be a hard sell or, or anything like that. It's process of, of getting to know them and you getting to know the brand to see if it's a good fit. And I think that First Light does a really good job here of pointing that out. Um, and also, too, I did forget to say, 
we're going to try and leave some time at the end for questions, but there is a question box and we have Mike on the line to also help interject questions if you guys have them, uh, but we want to just share as much as we can, but encourage you to ask questions or anything else that you, uh, that we're not being clear on. Should have done that up front. Um, so I'll take the second point, Eric, and here we talk about financial education of your franchisees. And I know that we have an audience of development people on that are going, okay, this is a slide I'm going to tune out on because this is an ops conversation. Um, but we really want you guys to understand how this really will help you sell more franchises. And this is something that the top performing brands on our list and on our reports, that's what they do. And if you're trying to also connect with top candidates, they are looking for this kind of information in their uh, research, which we're going to get into the next point. But it all starts with the financial education of your current franchisees. Uh, one of the biggest things that we've found in the last two years is that a lot of business people, and that includes franchise owners, don't understand a P&L. Uh, so I think we've seen in the last uh, probably 18 months, two years, that franchisors are really focused on more tools to help give the franchisees better business know-how. So giving them profitability tools and understanding of, of how their missed goals or meeting and exceeding their goals really impacts their business, not just today, but down the road. So uh, I think that we've seen uh, just a couple of examples, Eric, and if you can think of others too, but we've seen specific roles uh, created within the executive team of uh, somebody that's focused on profitability and more business acumen uh, on, for the franchisees. And we've also seen that, that FBC or that franchise business consultant role shift. So it's not just about compliance and uh, visiting the stores to uh, kind of foster that relationship, but more how to help on the business side of things. Have you seen that too, Eric? Yeah, I you know I think that that's been a huge shift. Um, you know, it started really with the recession when a lot of franchisors stopped selling um, and really focused operationally to get their unit economics under control. Um, and I mean, talk about sending a strong message. I mean, when you have someone within your organization that the vice president of unit economics or you know franchisee profitability or w whatever it may be, I know. Um, Fast Signs has four major initiatives that they're working on, and one of those major initiatives is to double uh, profitability for the franchisees. And I mean, that just sends an extremely strong message to the franchisee that, hey, you know, these guys care, they're focused on the bottom line. Um, but, you know, to Michelle's point, so many franchisees, um, you know, they, they weren't small business owners prior they don't necessarily know or, or have that wealth of financial information, um, business acumen that they should. And many times the franchisor, you know, in their training provides that, you know, that this is how we make our signs or this is how we provide senior care, whatever the services, but they really don't have that background business uh, financials information that they really need and understanding you know again they don't have to be a, a, an accountant or you know something to that extreme but understanding the P&L what are the KPIs that are important you know how does the balance sheet work how do you know how does cash flow through the business um, and what those key uh, indicators are because again if they don't have a good idea, they're going to be talking to your candidates. And I mean, then the number one question that franchisee candidates want to know is, you know, how much money am I going to make at the end of the day? And and so again, if your franchisees, I I talk to franchisees all the time about this, and it's shocking to me how many franchisees don't really know how much money they make. Um, it seems seems funny, but they they don't. I mean, they typically will will say what their sales are, but they have not as good a clear understanding of what the profit of the business was and then at the end of the day what their actual take home was. So that's, you know, really important to deep education with franchisees um have them understand what, you know, what are the key financial drivers of the business, how those metrics, you know, every business has its key metrics that they look at um and and how they can control that within their business. 
Yeah, the other thing too is I think that we definitely have seen that franchisors are doing more to collect and share those financials among their franchisees. That was definitely a shift I'd say three or four years ago. They might have been collecting it, but they weren't definitely weren't sharing it. Uh, and just that shift of really opening up, I mean, that is the power of the franchise, of the model, in that you're, you can give your current franchisees access to what your top performers are doing and what their costs and their revenue looks like. Uh, same thing with the you know, best case scenario. If I work my tail off, if I follow this model, what, what do I look like if I'm at the top? They can identify those top performers to really get those best practices from them. Um, so that really does help franchise development because if you have that information, that's where you can then start creating a stronger uh, and, and, a, and a detailed and an impressive item 19 that becomes meaningful for you in the sales process. Um, and, and just being able to give candidates access to that financial information and that you have that type of coaching is where it really applies to you. And that goes to the third point here after you have financial education for your current franchisees, we're getting into now how you use the financial education uh, to make your candidates stronger. So Eric, I'll let you jump in here. Yeah, again, I mean, as I said, it, you know, it's it's shocking to me how many franchisees don't really have a good grasp of, of their financials. And again, when your candidates are talking to your franchisees, that's, you know, that's where they're getting most of their financial information from. Um, so, you want to make sure that they really do understand the model, understand their financial, um, and 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 share that, that they're sharing the right information. Um, again, you, if you're collecting that information, I, I know you know four or five years ago, a lot of franchisors that I talked to about collecting financials from their franchisees, you know, basically just said, look, you know, our franchisees just don't want to share that information. They think it's Big Brother, you know, looking over their shoulder. Um, the reality is, though, if, if you're sharing that information back across the network, helping them understand where they stand uh, on all their, you know, key performance indicators, you know, what, you know, what metrics, how, how do they look compared to, you know, their region or, or, or other people that are, you know, been in business as long as they have and help coach them, they're going to be less concerned about, oh, you're just, you know, want to get into my business and you're really using this. And again, once you have that information, being able to share it back with candidates is is critical to recruitment. Um, yeah, know, the I, other, I know that some people, they also can look at their competitors' FDDs by putting them through friend data, or most development people have done that. Two other FDDs that I would encourage you guys to look at are Wild Birds and Goddard, if you can get your hands on them, because they do such a deep they're doing it by the store level or, or location level. Um, so getting into that much detail, I think, can really become powerful if you, if you have a good story to tell. No, it's it's absolutely true. And and you know when I say franchisees don't obviously have a great understanding of, of financials, franchisee candidates uh, clearly don't either. And I think it's critical for the franchisor and, and you in the development process to start educating candidates not only about your business and business model and how it works, but also just, you know, general business and in, in, in financial information in general. Um, I do a session at the IFE um, each year, you know, talking about how much money you can make in franchising. And, and jokingly, I put up a slide about, you know, how many want to make $600,000 a year versus $112,000 a year versus $47,000 a year. And, and, you know, I think the, the answer there is, is obvious where you want to be, but really understanding that these are people for the most part that have never owned a business before and they don't necessarily know what what the financial information that you're giving them or that they're getting from your franchisees actually means. Often is what happens is that, you know, someone will hear, well, we do six hundred thousand dollars a year in sales. Well, you know, that's top line revenue. That has nothing to do with you know, what you're going to take home as the business owner. Um, I mean, it obviously has something to do with it, but um, it has nothing to do with profitability um, of the business, obviously take home income. So understanding that and, and educating your candidates as to what these numbers mean before they start talking to franchisees, because believe me, if they come in with the expectation of making $600,000 a year and they're actually making $47,000 a year, after they've taken out taxes and repaid loans and reinvested into the business and, and yada, 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 they're going to be extremely, extremely upset. And that's just going to you know, 
validation long term. So making sure that candidates have that basic foundation of financial understanding of how businesses generate revenue, how the cash flows through the business um, will will definitely help not only you know bring in smarter candidates but also just you know keep that validation strong down the road. You know when when we look at you know most franchisors and the information that they're providing to franchisee candidates, it's really two pieces of, of information. They they're very clear about you know what the initial investment is on the front end, um, and you know if they do have an item 19, typically it it provides some level of average unit sales. Uh, again, it's in many cases it's top line. Um, the best item 19s I've seen, as Michelle mentioned, with Wild Birds. Um, Bright Star is another one, uh, you know, very detailed item 19, 15, 20 pages long showing net revenue um, and, and profitability of the business. More detail you can provide. I know some of you may not um, have control over that, but push your management teams um, to really get transparent with candidates and start providing a lot more detail in that item 19. Because what is not talked about when you, you know, is this red curve here. I mean, every business has that time period where you're losing money and, you know, and cash is going out the door faster than it's coming in the door. And and if the franchisee candidate doesn't understand that when they come in, again, their, their satisfaction is going to tank. They, you know, maybe they'll be successful and survive. Uh, most likely they won't have the capital and they'll go out of business. It's going to just kill your validation down the road. Um, so you obviously want to get them as much financial information as you can up front. Have them understand, you know, what is the initial investment to get into this business realistically? What's been the experience of franchisees? What's that capital need to get me over the hump? Um, and make sure that they have resources to, to provide that to the business as well. And then, you know, talk about your 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 average sales, your uh, top performing stores, all that stuff. But have them understand that it's going to take time to get there. Um, you know, so often I talk to candidates or franchisees that are like, you know, I, you know, it took me three, four years to actually get to, you know, the average in the system. You know, and that's fairly normal. But if the candidate comes in with the expectation that they're going to, you know, get to profitability within six months, obviously that's that's going to create a huge operational nightmare for you, and and again, hurt validation down the road. You know, one, I know this is, go ahead, Michelle. No, I was just going to say it also, too, can help set you up in the development process as, as more of an expert. You know, if they're talking to multiple uh, development people from different brands, if you're trying to teach them how to look at things and have a realistic expectation and you're using that financial piece to be more transparent, it really does help set you apart more as a coach and, and really wanting them to come into your brand with your with their eyes wide open and not just being sold uh, into the brand. So I think that's something that adds to it as well. And I just wanted to share this, um, you know, we, we call this our franchisee life plan um, that we give uh, to candidates. This actually came out of a, a, a piece of information that Mr. is with their franchisees. And, you know, where you share this information in, in the sales process, whether it's in the sales process or after they become a franchisee can or franchisee after they've signed the agreement, you know, you'll obviously have to talk to your attorney about that and, and you know, your comfort level with the amount of disclosure financially that you're providing on the front end. But, you know, again, this is a, you know, in this case, a 10-year franchise agreement. You need a 10-year plan and to show, you know, be able to sit down with a candidate and say, you know, on average, again, you know, your situation may vary, but on average, this is what happens. Um, and so to show, you know, what the average sales cycle is, how long does it take to get to profitability, what are your costs, and, you know, what is the net profit of the business, and then, you know, and then look at, you know, beyond, again, don't let that franchisee candidate assume that the net profit of the business is going to be their take home, because there's all those other elements, the taxes, the reinvesting in the business, the, you know, capital expenses that, that come out of that. So, un, you know, have them have a very clear understanding of that um, so they can look at this as, you know, the investment that it that it really is. And um, 
you know, again, this is a, a an example. Mr. Reuter uses this very effectively with their franchisees, and they, you know, and they go down all the way to the level of what what's the at the end of the day, what's the business worth? I mean, they have a, uh, a lot of experience as to what resales um, in their system are worth, and so the the you know, again, the franchisee has a very good understanding of over time what their business is worth, what they can expect to get um, from a resale standpoint, and the the more transparent you can be, the the uh, the headaches will just certainly go away. I mean, it's 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 just uh, you know the unexpected um, situation is the worst, and and we just see so many cases where franchisees come in with these unrealistic expectations of what they're going to make. That may not be your fault as a franchise development person. You may not have said you're going to make 150 grand. You know, it's the easiest thing you've ever done. But they may have talked to a franchisee. They may have talked to their neighbor. Um, so it's your your responsibility to make sure that you do set that expectation and make sure that they are being very realistic. And if they're not, then you know, let them go to somebody else because you don't want them in your system. Eric, this is Mike. I just want to interject real quick because somebody brought up the point that they don't think that you can actually share um, the profitability prior to signing a franchise agreement. So you can't share it with the candidate. Do you know if that is um, an accurate statement or, or is there a way to avoid that? Yeah, you can share, um, you can share whatever you want with a candidate. Um, the caveat in that is that it has to be consistent with what's in your item 19. Um, so if you're sharing any kind of financial details, um, it, it needs to be consistent with what's in your earnings, uh, your financial performance representation, item 19 in your FDD. Um, again, talk to your attorney. Um, there's lots of uh, creative ways to do it, and, and attorneys, some are more conservative than others. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. Ten years ago, uh, only about 20% of franchisors actually had any information in their item 19. Um, it's now flopped, uh, where 80% of franchisors have an item 19, uh, which is great. Unfortunately, most item 19, the majority of item 19s are gross sales, uh, average gross sales, and you know they they modify them in some way to typically show their top performing stores. Um, you know, gross sales tells me nothing um, as a as a potential business owner. It tells me nothing about how much money I'm going to make because it doesn't give me any kind of information on expenses. Um, you know, it, it, it's a starting point, but it's really not all that helpful. Um, I, I would, in, you know, really encourage you to get to an item 19 um, and talk to franchisors that have great item 19s, the, you know, the wild birds, the bars of the world that have collected financial information from all their franchisees and really boiled it down into a really good, solid item 19 um, that explains, you know, both gross and net numbers. Um, you know, obviously the exception is when you're selling a, a resale unit, you can obviously disclose any any specific profitability information and financial performance information specific to that unit. Um, but you can share, you know, you're able to share whatever you want, again, as long as it's consistent with your item 19. Well, and Eric, I would also say you can also show them how to get at those numbers. So even if you can't provide them with the actual numbers, when they're building their business plan or talking to other franchisees, they can ask questions that will help them get closer to. Um, so number four is active validation. Uh, so typically, I think most people think of validation as being very late in the process. It's not until you disclose your candidate and you give them the FDD. You definitely should think about sharing that validation sooner and, and making more of it available. I think we are seeing a trend in, in websites where franchisors are, are telling more stories through testimonials, giving more uh, personal story behind existing franchisees. Where did they come from? How long have they been in the business? Using quotes and things like that uh, can, can just help make it more real, make it about the people in your business and not just the brand that you're trying to sell them. Um, we have a few clients and what they do is they share a survey they do with us, they share the individual franchise reviews with their candidates before they even hand them the FDD. And that way, 
uh, they feel like they're protecting their franchisees time by saying you know here's all the comments that were put in through this survey that we send out to everybody uh, you know go through them and ask us questions and things and concerns that you have before you get to the validation and it really helps you uh, from a development standpoint again using that word transparency showing them that you know we take the time to ask our franchisees what they think and we're sharing it with you because we want you to have a real realistic expectation as you come in uh, but also that uh, it allows you to show how most of your franchisees feel about the brand so that when they start picking up the phone and making calls to the franchisees, if they happen to hit somebody that's having a bad day or they happen to hit someone that doesn't love your brand because it happens. You know, if, if you're doing real research and you're looking at a brand and you're given any kind of data or anything on the, on the Internet that says everything's roses, everyone loves us, I think are naturally skeptical and that's going to kind of throw up a red flag if you if you can put the context of how how few of your franchisees are unhappy or if you can talk about you know I don't love these things that they do but I love my relationship with them I feel like I'm a valuable part of this brand that's more of the story that you want to tell how you work through those uh, not necessarily al aligned views on different topics that come up so really showing them what your franchisees have to say and the other pieces make that data available to them if you're doing any kind of surveying share statistics of how much they like certain parts of it and you can pick those higher rated things but talking to them 90% of our franchisees love our initial training and support if you're doing that with your initial uh, franchisees after they go through your initial training you need some solid feedback to share with candidates that are coming in that might decide that training and support is the most important piece to them. So whatever you can do to help make that data or those stories available uh, and again using it in your in your process and your marketing to get them to interact with your development team. You're trying to do something that gets to connect with you and pick up that phone so that they're not just on their own. Uh, on uh, so that active validation just really don't don't leave it to chance don't let them just randomly pick up the phone and call people uh, I mean that is one part of it but as much as can help tell that story up will help you pull them through that process a little easier yeah I think you're right 100% on Michelle is you know I mean buying a franchise uh, investing in a franchise is a huge decision very emotional decision and as soon as a franchisee candidate can connect, make a, a, a connection with one of your existing franchisees, um, you, you know, you're back 50% over. I mean, it's if you can get over some of those emotional um, buying uh, decision things and, and just get them connected with a franchisee that has similar interests, similar backgrounds, and and have them, you know, again, using those testimonials as much as possible. But Educating them about validation um, before they begin the process is key. So it, things like using a password um, for validation, so that when I, you know, not anybody can just pick up the phone and call a franchisee and get information. Again, your franchisee's time is is valuable. You don't want candidates wasting time uh, with your franchisees unless they're very serious. So I think using a password is is a good idea. Um, and and just educating franchisee candidates about you know what are the right questions to ask what should they be looking at before they pick up the phone and, and call franchisees because again if they're not asking good solid questions um, and respecting your franchisees time in all that um, you know obviously they're not going to be a, a great franchisee and a great operator down the road so you know I know we're getting close on time here and I want to uh, keep it to uh, our 30 minutes so I just wanted to real quickly wrap up here on our last point uh, with leadership access and it sounds obvious um, but it, it's amazing uh, to us how many systems as they grow especially um, the the top level leadership gets further and further away from the franchise development process and you know very often they're only meeting candidates at discovery day very briefly and and you know if you go to any of the conferences multi-unit um, Franchise Update multi-unit conference. I know did a big panel this past year um, with some of the top level uh, kind of premier multi-unit franchisees and what they look at when they're looking at different brands. Certainly, strong financial metrics is and sharing financial information and transparency around financials is 
is number one, but number two is access to the leadership team and being in with the CEO and the founders and um, whoever that senior management team is and really pick their brain on the business and what you know what's exciting about the business and you know don't hide um, your your CEO or your president um, until discovery day get them get them out there I mean that's that's their job and again it's easy with a small system um, it, it gets harder and harder as you grow to meet every candidate that's coming through discovery day um, but it's interesting that can learn. It's you know one of the things that uh, we've heard uh, a story from uh, one of our clients, Brightstar, for years about how um, Shelley used to take candidates out to dinner just to see how they would interact with the wait staff, um, which tells a lot about how they would potentially interact uh, with clients and employees as a franchisee. Little things like that, um, building those you know personal relationships outside of you know the discovery day process can tell you a lot about a candidate you know the questions that they ask or or the things they may do when when their guard is down a little bit so again getting them in front of the leadership team in a less formal setting uh, where they can share uh, information and, and you know again you might pick up on things that you wouldn't have otherwise um, and I know you know carrying that through as they become a franchisee is critical too that's that's the one thing that we see in our surveys over and over again is that franchisees want more access to the senior leadership team and you know franchisees again as systems grow it becomes harder and harder to have that regular contact with your franchisees so I would tell your CEO if you're not the CEO um, how critical this is and figure out ways you know whether it's uh, non-business trips uh, a number of clients that take their teams and go off for a you know a three or four day vacation really uh, not to not formally talking about business but you know using that as an opportunity to just bond with your franchisees and carry that forward um, that relationship that connection I mean I think it's so uh, we so often forget that people that come to franchising you know they're they're that joiner they they want to be something bigger than themselves um, and they want that, you know, community. Um, they'll get some of it from other franchisees, but they really want to be able to rub elbows with the management team. And as as the system grows and that management team gets farther and farther away um, from the franchisees, it, it it just really kind of hurts that relationship. So the more you can do to kind of keep that um, going and and feed that synergy will will help. All right, so with that, we're going to wrap it up because we uh, we are over our time. We had a couple questions come in, so uh, we've been answering them as they come in. Uh, but if you guys have call, if you have questions or uh, if, if you'd like any kind of follow up, just let us know afterwards. Otherwise, we will give you uh, a quick follow up call just to to see if you enjoyed. Uh, the tips that we shared. Uh, we also are coming up on uh, September 30th as our deadline. If you have not gone through uh, a franchisee evaluation to see how your franchisees are validating, uh, definitely take advantage of this. You can uh, participate in a free version of the survey. You get a baseline. You understand how you compare to other uh, systems and how they're validating. And that deadline is coming up on September 30th. If any of you will be in Atlanta for leadership and development, we'll be down there. So hope to see you at that event uh, or at the uh, fan meeting in DC coming up on September 28th. We will be there as well. Uh, we will get you out also a recording of this uh, for attending. So thank you guys all for taking part and we, we hope to include you in our next round of data.